helpful. That'll help. Okay, so we'll start with Taylor. So okay. I'm going to, yeah, tell us what's going on, Taylor, while I queue up your video. Sweet. I was going to say, if you want to queue them up or I have them ready to go in case something goes wrong. Um, I drove 45 minutes to get to good internet today. Sweet. So. Oh my, oh my gosh. gosh. God, Where, yeah, are you in Utah? I am in Nebraska. Um, so, and I'm at my favorite, this is like a very cute coffee shop here oh, in yeah. O'Neill, Nebraska. That's that cute. I'm kind of obsessed with. <laughs> and it turns into a bar at 2 p.m. It's the Ooh, best. <laughs> so, yeah. Great. Right. Yeah. I'm staying uh, at an accommodation slash butchery, which is very yeah. typical for this area. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Know that feeling. Are you so, pulling Canna or Kepler first? We're going to pull Canna first. Okay. So there she is. So All right. Do you have anything we need to know first? This is kind of an accidental. This particular video was accidental and it worked for this workshop. Um, I stuck the food next to the fence, just trying to move it away from the cones. Um, I'm trying to work on moving the hides of the food away from the cones so they can just kind mm -hmm. of be more of a visual trigger she's too small for her actual search harness so she's searching on like four million different harnesses um and before this she actually missed it because I put the cones too far away so this is the second run through where I moved the cones around a little bit mm -hmm. and then had her search again okay Kiana you ready search Kiana search Can I ask what the target is? Just soft food. Yeah, she's like what, 12 weeks old now? Um, Four months at 12? It might be 12. That's 16, I think. Or 16. Yeah. She's still a baby. Yeah. She's doing really well in this environment now. Is it on the other side of the fence or I haven't seen no, it yet? No, it's just right there next to the pole. Oh, okay. There wasn't a lot of wind and then the noise you're hearing in the background is they were mowing the fields. So <laughs> good distraction. Yeah, she seems like she's on. Yeah, there. good Yay. girl. <laughs> that was a good one, baby. Good girl. Good job, baby. That was Taylor like, oh. I didn't think that would take that search would take that long. <laughs> yeah yeah that's okay yeah the only thing i'm seeing here is potentially right around here actually like stepping back a little bit so if you could kind of step here, i'm gonna pause it can you guys see my cursor yes okay maybe stepping like over here or okay. even kind of further in that direction to give her some like breathing room um, one of the things we want to think about when there's, if there's like a physical barrier adding pressure, then we can step back as a way to alleviate some of that pressure for the dogs. And especially with like, a, a like some dogs, like if you've got, I don't know, like the, the typical example is like a Labrador. They're just like, whatever, I don't care. You know, they're bred right. to barge through brambles and sit on boats with strangers. So they don't tend to be as responsive to that pressure. Um, but like, especially with our herding dogs or novice dogs or less confident dogs, like really stepping back can alleviate some of that pressure and that can make it a little bit easier for them to have space to source. Um, and especially as we're, if we were to actually be expecting her to alert, cause she's doing a lovely job of like following this odor cone and moving around, but like by you stepping in and kind of hovering here, we could actually have pushed her into an alert if she was at that stage. It right. seems like she's got it under control, but just as a handling thing in general. Did you have any questions on hers or does anyone else have anything they want to say? She's a super Yeah, cute good girl. She's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. No, and I love, she does a great job of like going out and following those odor cones. And she's clearly 
on it. Um, well, and this is only like starting. the fourth time that I took her out to like work on stuff. Like we don't, I don't, I have not worked her every day. Like I've worked Kepler to train, uh -huh. if that makes sense. She's yeah. just naturally loves to follow her nose. And I just don't stop her if she does it in the house. <laughs> That's great. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to see if we can pick up on exactly when she does seem to catch that odor. Cause here she's clearly like investigating people's spit. Uh <laughs> And yeah, like even for you, I would say like I would have like you know it's right there, but maybe I would have stepped further past it a little bit more so that you don't accidentally use your leash pressure or like your body pressure to pull her back in. Like it's I've been thinking about this concept. I'm literally in the middle of writing a blog post about this right now as this like there's this connection in between you and your dog, either physically through the leash or not, just kind of right as like the spatial pressure. And we can, by moving too far away from our dog, we're kind of stretching a rubber band and that tends to bring them back into us. Right. And we can use that to our advantage, but we also need to be aware of that if we're accidentally using that to suck the dog into where we know the hide is. Right. And then on the flip side, like we also don't want to like take that rubber band and like smoosh it in be as we're like crowding in to see what they've got if there's a physical barrier there. We kind of always want to be at that like, middle middle point yeah I'm like I was about to pull my hair tie out but we don't have to get that crazy with with this concept quite yet <laughs> so oops I don't need to open a note okay so now we've got Kepler oh and then we've got kind of kind of second try and then, did you have Kepler as well? I'm not yeah, seeing a Kepler. Under right load now. reply, if you click load reply, it'll pop up. Uh, there we go. I lost this, lost it as well. So, <laughs> you what? I did the same thing when I was pulling them up. I'm like, where's Kepler's? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, this yeah, is in a Home Depot parking okay. lot. We're kind of off to the side. Um, there's not a lot going on. I made the mistake of doing obedience, putting her up, doing Kepler search, then pulling her out again. So that's kind of why she sticks near me and kind of why I'm just like standing there doing nothing. Cause I'm like, go away, mm -hmm. <laughs> go look. So lesson learned, don't do obedience before you go and do searching. <laughs> yeah. That can be confusing. And especially like when they're, they're young and new to it. <laughs> so, okay. Anything else that was weird or interesting with the search that we want to keep an eye um, on? She's kind of... I just sat there and said nothing when she looked at me because I wasn't super sure what to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and kind of similarly here, what you could try to do is like turn your hips and shoulders, take a half step, disengage from her visually um, and also kind of guide her into starting movement again and then the birds came out so she got yeah to well that. that's yeah birds are hard gosh her ears look like they've grown more than her face in the last couple of weeks there we go good girl yeah because when she gets it it went the hardest route to it it is just behind that mm. sign i did make it really easy yeah, yeah. Well, I love the environmental confidence. Um, yeah, and the other thing, like, you can also just cue a certain Yeah, good girl. good girl. Good girl. Um, yeah, this is great. Um, yeah, that's, like, as soon as she kind of started moving again, she seemed to have caught it pretty early. And, yeah, I think the biggest thing I would have maybe done is, like, taken a step um up like towards this this one up here mm -hmm. or kind of away in some way that might move her towards it um or at least kind of get her moving again but it once she decides to go she's got it yeah as soon as she catches it it's like game over she's gonna find yeah. it but... yeah good girl good job baby good girl great um sonia or michelle do you have anything for uh Kana. Is it Kana or Kana? Kana. Kana. Okay. Um, it's based off of um, here at Kana Creek up in Gunnison, Blue Mesa National Park or National oh, Forest okay. Area. 
Yeah. Okay. Cool. Huh? Um, yeah. And then, um, as I as I said up top, uh, Sonia and Michelle, like, um, Taylor's got to run, so we're gonna go through all of her videos. Normally, we might kind of cycle through all of them, but Taylor's got to go. So. All right, Kepi, come here. Kepi, come here. Sit. Yes, good sit. Oh, um, because you guys haven't seen, I make him sit before we search to make sure he still has brain cells. <laughs> Yes. sometimes we lose brain cells so if he can't sit we don't search yeah <laughs> that was our first I feel like that was like the first year of Patreon was like okay can we get his brain on board for searching okay. Ready? Okay. now Ready? we're working on everything else searching I love that lead hey searching send you the link Yeah, see, lovely job there. You you kind of did step back and give him space when he got into that tighter space. And is he on birch here or is he on food? Kepler, Cersei. Birch, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I pulled the birch box. Oh. What? Is that Canna? Yes, Cersei. We're working on it, but for now. <laughs> Okay. Oh, got a stretch. Did he? So you did some obedience in this environment first before putting her up, or just with Canna? Just with Canna. Okay. So when he searched the shopping cart, because that's where the hide is, I wasn't sure if I should mark it or if I should wait for him Kep to actually like, find it because his Sershay. nose wasn't near it. Okay. What? Yeah, Sershay. we can. Uh, we'll watch again and see, because that was actually feedback I got from a couple like really not over there. expert Come on. scent work people um, on Sorry, my I... video with Niffler uh, was that I actually probably should have marked earlier. There was a point where I should have called it. Just, um, yeah, like here, I would probably. Yes. Yeah. Good boy. Good, Good dog. Yes. Good, 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 good. So yeah, the two things I'm seeing oh. here is potentially take him for a lap mm -hmm. and let him sniff before asking him to work in a place like this like let him oh, kind of walk around and think and get to know the space a little bit before asking him to work so that he doesn't feel the need to disengage and think about it right um and then we can kind of add that into your like ready to work yes uh set up for him and yeah i think you could have marked there um because what i suspect like odor flow wise could be going on let's see did i go too far back or not far enough not far enough not far enough let's get that out of the way um i just need to pause it at the right angle here so what could be happening is you could be getting a little bit of like the odor getting pulled up this corner and mm. having a little bit of like a micro chimney effect coming up. Yeah. It's really hard to say without a smoke bomb, <laughs> um, which I just bought so many of and I'm very excited to play with. But um, yeah, again, like maybe could have marked there, but I think the biggest thing to think about for him is like because we then have this like 10 or 15 seconds of disengagement and thought maybe giving him a little bit more time to get to know the space before asking him to work right and I'm pretty sure he pulled over there because that's where I was doing obedience with Canna mm -hmm. <laughs> so like, oh spare cookies yeah yeah that's really nice though He's got a, like, his alert looks so nice now. <laughs> you know, compared to what it was. <laughs> yeah. Um, does anyone else have any questions about why Taylor did what she did or any thoughts there? Feel free to pipe in. This doesn't have to be all me. All right. So this is in this more or less the same area. Okay. Ready? Yeah. So on the Thursday? opposite side, but like in the fence. Okay.
I was really proud of him because the fence moves. So. Oh. Yeah, see, so again, really nice job here. Like, because you walking into this space would cause so much extra pressure. Like, good job giving him space there. Good log line management. <laughs> I had my phone in my hand and I'm like, <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, I was just gonna ask if you had like a chest strap. Nope. Okay, clearly not. I forgot it that day. Yeah. It's tough. So where is he in relation to the hide here? It's in that second brick above his head. Oh, okay, nice. That. And I didn't realize that those poles roll, so when he gets yes! on them, it's good boy. Good job. Good Ooh, nice. boy. Good. And I just fed there. He did get his ball after because he was caught, so I didn't want him yeah. to do anything. Yeah. No, that's really, and I, like, I love his confidence getting up in there. How, um, is this just for Patreon, or is he doing a ton of elevated stuff? Like, are those just the videos you're sharing with us, or is that pretty typical um, for him? Yes! This Good is set up boy! For Good! Mm -hmm. We've been doing a lot of, um, lately we've been doing a lot of vehicle stuff, and so... Yeah by definition most of it's above his head like I'll stick some in the wheels and stuff and like on the undercarriage but then like if I stick it in like a wheel well it's still up yeah um, that and makes then I've sense been sticking stuff like on the ground more and trying to make it inaccessible so that way I don't overdo the the elevated highs but I just saw this fence and I'm like perfect <laughs> that's perfect yeah no I think you I think you know that this is actually such a cool little search area like there's so many ways to make this so much harder or easier I'm loving this I love Home Depot um, <laughs> um yeah no and I think that makes sense for your target um and good job so far I haven't seen you setting anything that's hard enough that then you're accidentally ending up in the situation where um like just be really careful with elevated hides to not then get to the point where if it's elevated up here and the dog is under it but not really finding it and not really making a decision and then when they glance up if you mark sometimes you can create this situation where then the dog is like when I'm confused I look up and then I get my ball um and they start just kind of having this like superstition so that is something to be careful of with elevated hides in particular but I'm not seeing that come up for you guys yet sweet yeah, that one went a lot better. And I do think it's because yeah. he was like used to the environment. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Um, it's, yeah, he looks much more comfortable and he really like pretty quickly, I mean, he kind of got lucky deciding to go down. Like, I think he's already got odor at this point and has already figured out he needs to go this way. Um, Maybe. And sometimes I think he just like checks an area just to check mm -hmm. and see how like how far the odor has gone yeah he does seem like a dog who likes to kind of follow gradients and like be sure but I love I mean it seems to me like he's working the scent cone basically from here oh. Like, I think he's already caught odor basically from when he pauses at the cinder block the first time. And then he's like working it for this entire video. Right. And and what was the, the target odor again? Birch. And Birch. these were, so I have like little waterproof cases that I put the hides in. So I'll pull them out fresh and then I'll leave them in those cases for about three weeks, work on those, and then I'll replace them. And I think these were on week two two and a half of just sitting in the, I mean, it's airtight, but they're not like in the jar with the oil. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I really think he's working at this whole time. How long had it been sitting out? 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, oops, I don't need an iMovie to open right now. Okay, cool. anything else? Nope. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. 
yeah. Okay. Um, okay gotta cut out now, but that's but, okay. Yeah, it's good to see you. Yeah, good to see you guys. Nice to meet you guys. Nice meeting right. you. Thanks for the well, video. Thanks. All right. Um, Sonia, I guess we'll do you next. Um and Michelle, did you have video for us or are you you just here to watch? I'm I'm sorry, I'm so terrible at technology. Um I have haven't even figured out how to get videos onto my computer, let alone onto <laughs> yeah, onto YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, no worries. Um, let me know if you need like a, I can send over some help for any of those. Uh, uh, once we get it onto the computer, that might. Yeah. Well, I don't know if I can send you some videos because I I kind of have a mess of stuff that mm -hmm. maybe you can kind of look over and then we can maybe focus on what videos might be more helpful with some of the things yeah. I'm trying to work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, we can work through that and kind of figure out how to get stuff on, online and whatnot. How is your internet access generally? Your internet. Uh, now. Yeah. Sometimes it's, it's pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I think the first, first week I was here, I struggled, but doing pretty good now. Okay, that's good. Um, yeah, we can, we'll chat later about trying to see how to get your stuff on. So, okay, so we've got Bruno. Tell us a little bit about, um, we know Kepler and Kana, Kana pretty well. So tell us a little bit about Bruno and what you're doing with him, Sonia. Um, he is um, a family pet. I lived in Austin, Texas, and I, when I got him, and I was very lucky, I hooked up with a, a really great group of dog trainers. Um, and I don't know, he was maybe, it gets so hot in Texas in the summer. And I commented that he would get really depressed because he spent so much time indoors. Mm -hmm. um, and she said, oh, you should do like air scenting or nose work. And um, we did air scenting. I, I mean, they called it air scenting or scenting. Um, which was it like a class where say one person would like, engage the dog, like my son or whatever, get him all excited, run and hide. And then mm -hmm. I would send the dog and he would come back and alert, which I did a bark. And then he would take me, I would say, show me. And he would take me back yeah. to the child. Um, he loved that. He actually, he loves all classes. It's, it's really Aww. interesting. He just starts popping wheelies and getting really excited to go to any class. Um, and then we did a nose work class and he loved that. I, have been really busy in life taking care of um, a parent, an elderly parent and my son and my husband travels a lot and my poor dog gets a lot of attention, but I don't do as much with him as, didn't do as much, don't do as much as he probably deserved. Um, but out of everything we did, like he also, you know, did canine good citizen and was a therapy dog and of everything that we've played around with, nose work is his absolute favorite. Uh -huh. um, just gets like so happy when we do it. Um, and my son's getting older, I'm having more time. So I've been playing around with my dog more um, and doing more like outdoor things. Um, mm -hmm. And he's the dog himself, he's nine and a half. He's a, a really confident, um, really stable level dog, like doesn't doesn't react to anything. Um, I don't know, just just really wants to please. I'm not sure what, I mean, I could go on forever, but I'm not sure what, if there's anything in particular I could share that would be helpful. Yeah, do you have any goals with him that are important for what we're working on now? <laughs> well, um, I think I, I sent you an email mm -hmm. and said that um, this past year, I past couple of years, I live um, near a national forest and we started to um, come across mountain lion kills. And mm -hmm. so that's really fun for me. Um, and then I put up game cameras and then, you know, get images of the mountain lion coming back. Um, so that's something I do. And those are, I'm not really sure how to go about doing that with him because if I, go in the woods and say, go find, you know, um, it, it's just like happenstance if he happens to catch the scent, which is right. every time we, we hike. Um, 
And then um, the other thing is I added in shed hunting for antlers this year. Mm -hmm. He did really good on that, but you know, I think he probably, and he also loves to take me just to bones, which was probably my sloppy training, trying to find mountain lion kills. Mm -hmm. So when I go into the woods, I'm not sure, at least with the antlers, I keep like a, a, fr a piece of fresh, um, like an elk antler, like a fresh mm -hmm. one, a piece of it. I pull it out, I let him sniff it, and then I say, go find. So since I um, practice with, when I've practiced with him, it's on every different odor. It might be like a banana in the house or somebody's dirty sock, or, you know, mm -hmm. um, he knows whatever I put in front of his nose and then say, go yeah. find. But I haven't, um, I haven't figured out how to do the mountain lion one yet. Yeah. That he just, um, it's, you know, we'll often be hiking and all of a sudden he'll stick up his nose or whip around and I will follow him and he'll take me to one. But I, I, I don't really know, like, I'm like, do I try mountain lion urine? Do I do scat? Do I take a piece of fresh deer? Like what? Like, yeah, I figured that one out yet. So I'm just, yeah. I'm just playing and I'm wanting to start with another dog because, you know, my dog is nine and a half. And so um, I now have like time in my life to like really kind of, and now I've met Kayla in this group. So I'm hoping to like jump into this and, and really mm -hmm. start to educate myself. Cool. Yeah, no, I think that's really helpful. And we can maybe um, during our next call, we should talk about like sample selection and uh -huh. acquisition and all of that sort of stuff. Cause I think that's going to be a really good meaty topic for this yes. particular question. Um, I haven't, I haven't known who to go to for that. And I'm, I'm so grateful. I came across your podcast. Yeah, no, we're so glad to have you. And this is exactly why we're here. And um, yeah, like I have some ideas okay. um, as far as what we can do there, but we won't derail this too, too much because it is, it's tricky. And I've seen, you know, it also kind of, again, it depends on your goals and like how important it is to, for you to remain really specific. Um, right. Like I would probably err on the side of avoiding urine because that's really hard to confirm uh -huh. whether or not you've got urine because he can right. just alert to a tree or a bush or whatever. And you're like, sure, buddy. Like, I don't know. I can't see it. <laughs> um, so I would, I would err on the side of scat in okay. instead. Um, and then finding that and confirming that can be kind of a whole thing. Um, but it sounds like you're in areas where you're able to find those. And then figuring out, um, again, now I'm like, I'm, I'm going too far down what I said I wasn't going to, but, um, you know, we want to figure out how to teach him to find a mountain lion kill site. We don't care if this deer was hit by a car. We don't care if this fawn died on its own. We want mountain lion kill site. So then it's basically kind of a contamination question of, can we introduce him to these other odors of deer, dead deer minus mountain lion uh -huh. and teach him, hey, you don't get paid for that. You only get paid for dead deer plus mountain lion. Well, I have, I, I probably should have posted it. I have um, a video of him where we were out hiking. I was actually shed hunting and all of a sudden, like, you know, he, he goes out, he's very good about going out and coming back. And he was frozen by a tree, like in a point and his hair was all bristled up. And I got out my phone and um, started filming him and he just wasn't moving. And I kind of like circled around him. And then there was a deer on the other side of the tree and he doesn't react to dead deer at all. Like if it's a deer on the side of the road, he might be like, well, I'll kind of walk over to it and walk off. But this was absolutely a different behavior. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. And it, as it turned out, it was like a, a fresh kill. And I took uh -huh. lots of pictures and videos of like the the you know the rip in the back of the neck and then in the front of the neck and Whoa, the cool. and it was and there were mountain lion prints um and the deer was still soft um, wow. like so he may have been reacting to the mountain lion being like right in that area I'm sure he was because he then yeah. approached the deer so slow and he's very jumpy um and in hindsight I I probably should have rewarded him more or marked more but at that moment I was like 
well, is this a mountain lion kill or how could that deer have gotten those cuts? And I was like taking pictures and sending to like my hunter taxidermy friend saying, what do you think happened to this deer? Um, and, you know, so I kind of missed the moment to, to really yeah. go bonkers rewarding him in that. But he definitely, he definitely knows the difference between a roadkill and a fresh kill because he doesn't yeah. re react to the roadkill. But like I said, he still seems to be confused whether he's taking me to, to fresh mountain lion kill or he also loves to, we spend a lot of time finding old bones. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So. That makes sense. So yeah, we'll, we, okay. <laughs> as I said, we'll, uh, we'll play with that later. No, it's okay. It's a, uh, it's a fun conversation to have. Let's see. Let me make sure I'm sharing the right tab. My, I have 55 open. My long-term goal, if I could find some way to, to use this kind of hobby, I love mountain lions, but even if it's with something else and, and actually use the data for something that would be amazing. Mm -hmm. If not, yeah. I'll just, Keep playing for fun with myself and my dog yeah yeah i think and that's another thing we we talk about quite a bit during like our coaching calls it's like okay how do we go about figuring out how to find partners and utilize this and offer up the dogs for help um so okay so what have we this is our basic search we are in a home depot sorry, parking lot home depot again mm -hmm. <laughs> thank god for home depot yeah And is he looking for a shed or what's he, what's he? Um, no, I used a, an oil. Um, I put mm -hmm. it in my notes. I don't remember. I looked for bird. Um, I, and I'll have to look, see, it was, it wasn't birch. It was some other, okay. Some other um, tree scent. Okay. That's just helpful sometimes for knowing how like big those scent clouds tend to be and so do you want the do you still want that barking to stick around um what is kind of the goal for his alert behavior right now <laughs> um you know he learned the bark when he learned this uh -huh. about like five years ago or something um mm -hmm. and and I taught him the bark he's not a barky dog like mm -hmm. he when other dogs bark at him he doesn't respond he only barks if somebody knocks on the door mm -hmm. or if um he's trying to get my attention, which I guess is the same thing. So I, I know maybe with my next dog, that might not be ideal for whatever reasons. It works for me just because yeah. it allows me to find him. It's very clear. It's not like yeah. I'm trying to interpret the lay down or sit. It's yeah. like, if he's making eye contact and barking, he's telling he's me. Got he it. Okay. Me. No, and there's nothing wrong with it. Um, just asking, um, mostly because the way your reward timing went, where you then cued him to sit. It's like, are you trying to get him to not bark and then sit for his reward or? Uh, I, I yeah. think this one or the other one, I said that my, my reward, my timing is awful and I would love help with that. Yeah, and, I think, yeah. go ahead. No, just I'm surprised he does as good as he does because my timing is just not good. We all have learner dogs. That's okay. Um, I've had so many realizations, even in the, like literally like this week, I was like, oh, so this problem that I keep blaming my dog for might actually have been something that I taught him like a year ago. Um, so it um, that's fine. What I would suggest would be, is he clicker trained or does he know any markers? Um, I've just started working with the clicker and he totally, you know, yeah. So, okay. I would suggest trying to click. Okay. Um, because that can allow you to have X, you can walk with the clicker in your hand during the search. Uh huh. Um, or you can use a verbal marker. That's usually what I would do with my dogs so that I can have my hands free for other stuff. And then you can mark the moment he does what you want without having to like, you know, we've all done this where we've got the tree pouch and we're like trying to get it ready so we can like throw to them or feed really quickly or whatever. And then very quickly the dog starts to like, the dog hasn't actually found it yet, but we're already fussing with our packets and like 
it okay. can become this really messy dance of like trying to get the ball or the treat out in time without cueing the dog that we're doing so so like the marker can really help kind of eliminate that issue and improve your timing without having to like figure out how to like have chicken in your hand so that you're ready to go right away my next one's even, yeah my next one's even worse so <laughs> that's why we're here like if you guys were all totally perfect and on it all the time with this I don't know why you would be spending your Saturdays working on this with me um so that's that's just fine let's see okay oh, there we go I'm such a sucker for chocolate labs I'm loving watching him I grew up with a chocolate that I wish I could uh handle today and I, I usually don't work on a a leash but I saw other people did so I was like oh maybe I'm supposed to I better do it for I do for safety in areas like this um kind of when it's necessary um uh -huh. but otherwise my dogs are usually off leash it just it really kind of depends on the situation and how worried I am about safety or them getting tangled and stuff or whatever I think it's good to have the skills to do both So is that sort of like a self, a, a natural alert that he started doing that? Or did you do any training for the barking? I did training. Um, I, I didn't want to have a dog that barked all the time. And I don't know if this is true or not, but one of the things I heard was one way to keep your dog from, or to help control the barking is to teach them to speak on command. So as a younger dog, I taught him to speak like with a hand signal. And then when I did the class for the scenting work, they were like, you know, pick your, um, I don't know what's the word called, how your dog's going to notify you that they found something. And so um, when he would run up to me, I would give him the command to speak and he would bark. And then I would, so I, I taught him to answer the question but he could already like um, speak on command. Okay. Yeah, I, th I see what you're, s I think here you're you're right. I, I would give you a little bit more. <laughs> oh my God. So yeah. what I did, it was yeah. in between the, the cards. Uh huh. For some reason, I, in that moment, I thought, oh no, he needs to go in between the cards and show mm -hmm. me. And yeah. forgetting that the assignment was through a, permeable barrier yeah that's okay well I think one of the things that we and I made the same mistake we can go back and watch Niffler's video where I did the exact same thing where we forget that like the dog's interpretation of being as close as possible to the odor or highest concentration of odor may not actually be where we expect it to be or where we think it is and rewarding them at the moment where like you know it's hard because it's like we don't want to reward them for like guessing or like alerting on fringe odor but in a situation where like this where he he did really um let's see like he does show this really nice he's like boom yeah he's like made the decision yeah in theory you could kind of pull him out and get him back in but I would do, if you wanted to do that, I would very much so do that and consider trying to guide him upstream versus stepping in and trying to like convince him to put his nose back on it. Right. And then not only that, then I tried to get him to squeeze his big body in between two narrow rows of, of shopping carts. Yeah, we haven't so, even done <laughs> Yeah. I just went from bad to worse in my um, handling. <laughs> all been there it's okay <laughs> but I posted it because I was like okay this, no, is, this is perfect this is something I would normally do so I should just put it out there mm -hmm. so I can learn from it yeah well and especially one of the things that like could be happening here we, I, we don't know exactly with the odor but it's like 
there's a chance that if it's over here and the odor is going this way, actually uh, coming towards him. It was. The wind was coming. Yeah, from the, actually even going right into that side. other side might be physically closer to it. But as far as like odor gradient you're right. is not you're right. any closer. Yeah, to him, yeah. he's like, you're moving me away from it. And sometimes you do like we, uh, this might be a workshop at some point is teaching the dogs the concept of leaving odor in order to get back to a stronger mm -hmm. point. Um, but yeah, and here, why don't we... I'm going to pull up Niffler's video to show you, just to make you feel a little bit better because I did the exact same thing. And then I use that as your, um, <laughs> uh, and then that was your example video. So like, of course you did the same thing. Um, okay. So, and this is kind of long, so we'll skip ahead. Oh my gosh. I was watching this and I'm like, I'm confused. I don't know. <laughs> Well, and especially because like you're kind of going around and around. So, okay, here we go. Um, Where is the, the hide? Yeah. So the hide is right around here, I think. Is but the wind way? is going towards the dumpster. So he's on, he's physically closer to it, but he's upwind of it. I think it's right here. Um, here, I'll pause it. Um, I want to say it's like right here. So he, but he's upwind of it here. So then we go around and around and then we go back in. So now we are on, so this is the same trash can and it is on the other side of this. Got it. Okay. No, it's actually, it's more over here. I lied a little bit. It's not on the other side of the trash can. It's through this fence towards the propane tank, but then also on the other side of this fence. So he's at kind of an angle from it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. okay. So was your, was your goal just to, um, you know, figure out, get a sense of how your dog alerted in these situations? Or did you have a training goal of, I want him to alert at a distance. Yeah, my goal was, well, yeah, what my original goal was, was to practice a little bit of this concept of like, hey, you might need to leave odor and come back in order to get to the highest concentration. And I think because of the airflow that we were dealing with, that actually wasn't really possible for him. Um, so my original goal didn't work out because I misunderstood the airflow. Um, and it turned into a really good illustration of like what he does in these situations. So what a couple of my mentors told me and a couple other people when I was kind of talking to them and showing them this video, I should have paid him. It's coming up. Probably potentially there at that little pause. There's a point where he shows a really nice like so there's probably odor collecting over there, coming through. Yeah, there. I should have paid him no. for that. Search. Um, oh, he even indicated, yeah. Yeah, he indicated, um, and yeah, so it's coming through here, but through both yeah. fences. And potentially, so you can see kind of the shadow of the car up here. That would have been a better way to set up what I thought I was setting up because then if he had come around to the other side, he would have actually still encountered an odor cone versus because it was like on the fence when he came around to the other side, then there was no odor up there. Does that make sense? Or do, I, yeah. do you want me to draw it? Oh, no, no, I was, um, okay. I'm just curious of, of, of this exercise, do you have, you know, an operational sense in mind, or is it just more about the training? Not for bats. It's more for training and more kind of for these like odor dynamic questions, both for him and me of like learning how to read these complicated odor setups more. It is the sort of thing that could be useful if we were searching in an agricultural area where there literally were fences or like really thick brambles or something like that. And kind of teaching yeah. the dogs how to navigate that. And also for me to recognize like, okay, he's alerted here. I'm not finding anything. What are the possibilities as far as what's going on here? Like, how can I help him move closer to the odor? How can I problem solve potentially where a source is if he's alerting and I'm not seeing anything? 
Okay. Yeah. No. There's yeah, two sides of it. You being able to read. Yeah. Exactly. Because yeah. So when he gets up here. Oh yeah. You can actually you can see it there. Right. Oh. Huh? There it is. So that's the bat clipped with forceps to the wall. Um, and, and what was your I'm, target odor? This is a bat. Oh, oh it is a bat. Yeah, is it a live bat? bat? No. I mean, not a live, a dead bat. It's a, it's yeah. a physical bat. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, you can kind of see here, like, he's pretty clearly not catching any odor, even though he passed really close by it. And he goes back here and he's like, no, no, it really smells over here. Mm hmm. Um, and I think, yeah, I chose to pay him that time. Catch. Yeah, you can hear me be like, okay, okay you know, like, <laughs> I guess. Um, so yeah, definitely um, a learning experience for all of us on this one, which was kind of why I decided to go ahead and do it. So, okay. Did we have anything else on, on this one other than kind of commiserating on all making the same mistake? <laughs> um, I have a quick question about, you yeah. know, um, you said to Taylor, like, take, take a lap. Um, is that something you would do? Like, is that something I should, like, all of us should do, like, in a working environment, or even in a practice like this, where you kind of, like, let the dog just kind of see everything that's out there before mm -hmm. you ask them to go work? Yes and no. It, if your dog needs it, then yes. Uh -huh. Um, <laughs> But if you've got a dog who consistently you can get, like, I don't do it with Barley. Okay. Um, because I get him out and he's shown me time and time again that I can throw him into pretty much any environment, ask him to work, he does it. Okay. Versus Niffler might need a little bit more of like, like if I do a search with him in a pet store, I might take him for a little walk through the pet store, let him kind of sniff and explore a little bit before I ask him to search. Um, it really depends on the the intensity of the environment and the dog. Right. Um, so and if, if he's showing you that he can get out where you're going and get uh -huh. to work right away, then you don't need to do it. Right. Okay. So, yeah. I guess I have a similar question with um, Sabala. So the younger dog that I've been trying to, you know, well, after Leica does her 1.6 kilometer search, which has been like, she's actually been running too much she's been doing like six kilometers um yeah um and we do three transects in a day so that's like 16 17 kilometers um so she's anyhow but then i do like a real mini transect with sabala after either if like it finds a poop we'll you know get closer to that one um or i'll just do like a little hide and then we'll mm -hmm. go we'll start downwind. Um, but yeah, same thing. I mean, she's usually pretty eager to get out of the vehicle and then just wants to like sprint off. Um, mm -hmm. Should I let her have a little sprint and then rein her in? Um. <laughs> yeah, that's what I do with Niffler. Like I kind of know, especially the first search or two of the day, I'll tell him to search and then I don't move for like a minute and I let him go do his big loops and kind of mm -hmm. work it out. And then as soon as I kind of see him engage and settle into a search, that's when I start moving forward and moving with him because like I could just start walking my transect the second I let him out, but he generally does not look engaged enough to me at that first point to start. Um, so I wait until it kind of looks like he's working and then I'm like, okay, now we can. Okay. And I'm still deciding if it's better to work her on lead or off lead or on a long lead or, or off lead. I mean, I would say her area of being able to focus is like, you know, 50 square meters, like really small because she wants to mm -hmm. smell every single little animal. Um, and so if she starts to drift off too far, um, you know, it, she won't get close enough to the scent. Um, I mean, she is good at doing a checks and guiding, you know, and guiding her, but yeah, I haven't really decided if it's better to work off lead or on lead. Yeah. I go back and forth about that as well, because like Niffler, Barley's definitely fine on or off. Um, 
I prefer working him off just because I think it's easier. <laughs> um, yeah. And then with Niffler, I think sometimes reining him in physically with the leash is helpful but it also squashes a little bit of his enthusiasm so I also tend not to do it unless in a search environment like in a in a training environment I might put him on leash to kind of use that as a way to teach him to slow down but because it kind of it doesn't it doesn't squash his enthusiasm like he worked well in that um in that video just now but yeah I, I don't think there's necessarily like yeah I mean I feel like it's all it's situational she needs to be in a small I don't have physical barriers it's an open field yeah. so I need either some barrier so either I'm constantly saying check here and having to rein her in with my with my commands which probably isn't that fun or yeah with an act of physical restraint both of them kind of like make it less fun for her yeah <laughs> but, I would never find that, you know, she'd get too far from the target and we would, you know, struggle to reach our goal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wonder about, yeah, the compromise of like a 30-foot a long line or something like that, which gives her a yeah. lot of freedom to circle and move. That's that's generally what I do with Niffler if I've got him off leash. Okay. Do you have a particular line that you recommend? Mm, I like... I like biothane, just really light, like okay. the thinnest biothane I can find. Um, palamine long lines are probably my favorite. Palamine? Yeah. Pal Is it spelled like pal palami palo P-A-L-O-M-I-N-E? Yeah, like palomino, but with an E Got instead it. of an O. Um, oh, I heard you mention like, oh, do you have on a chest strap? I'm like, that's brilliant. I haven't even heard of that. Because um, I hate yeah. constantly, you know, having to use both hands. Yeah, yeah, I feel like I need one of those GoPro chest mounts. Um, that makes it look like you're in a first person shooter video game. Yeah, <laughs> but, I mean, I guess I could just make one, you know, rig one yeah, up Yeah, I've well. seen people make them or even make them on a hat <laughs> um, where you kind of like use like a, almost like a headlamp strap to get your phone. I feel to like that forehead. would cause some neck pain. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on how heavy your camera is, yeah. Um, <laughs> so no no sorry not for the camera for the I thought it was someone uh, using it for actual strap so you have it strapped on you and then no bring it no it's I was thinking you don't for the have camera. so much slack yeah you can okay. uh, you can use like in Kenya they just use flexi leads which is nice and convenient because then you're not having not to manage have, okay I don't know why people never use I mean I guess it's a thing of control but yeah, oh, I, like I like flexi the, leads the for search work. Yeah, okay. I like flexi flexi leads for search work. I think they're great. <laughs> okay, I'll probably yeah. stick. Yeah, I've got a sixteen foot one for Sabala. So yeah, that might be I'll worth trying out. for her as again like a nice little compromise. All right, um, so maybe let her run, bring her in, and mm -hmm. then do a little search. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna watch one more because we've got Michelle's as well. And I think it's like 3 a.m. in Sydney. So we're um, we're gonna do this for her, but she will she's not here because again, it's impossible to find a time that works for everyone. <laughs> yeah, 3 a.m. is pretty challenging. Uh, yeah, so she's also got a puppy. Um, and this is so Merlin is also like, I'm not quite sure how old he is now, probably 16 weeks. Um, I think he's a very similar age to Canna. And um, yeah, he is hopefully going to be working on some underground endangered orchids. So she's really working on like getting him low to the ground um, and searching. Yeah, again, low to the ground. He's leaving. We were searching over there before, so he's probably going to Yes, good boy. He just found. I can find First it. thing I would say, just pausing for for her. Um, if yes is a marker, be really careful about using that if you don't want it to be a marker. So uh, she said yes. Here. We were sitting here with Eric Ross and he had Right. Yes, good boy. Yeah. So right there, if you want that to be praise then make it praise. If yes is a marker, that generally is followed by food. 
don't use it unless you want to follow it with food Um, because that can also kind of pull them out of the search even even if you don't feed seems to be the topic of the day huh yeah it's a lot of consistency and i mean and i think half of it is just what's on my mind more than everyone doing the same mistake it's just what i'm picking on that day Yeah, so she does a good job of following him away from it and kind of pivoting back to give him that space. Um, again, kind of like what we're talking about with Taylor, of like rotating yourself around and out rather than like crowding in. Um, oh my God, how cute. No, <laughs> babies. No, I'm loving all of our puppies lately. So is she using an actual orchid? No, I think he's searching for food at this point. Um, okay. The orchid yes. is really... Yeah, good, good boy. boy. Yes. Oh. Good boy. Yeah, Did you get it? Sort of... I don't think he's gotten to it yes. yet. I don't know how yeah, far so she it. does seem to oh, be using... See. Uh, yes, as a marker, so. Good boy! You got it! Yeah, good boy. Good boy. Um, yeah, she does a really nice job of marking at that right moment as he, like, is making that effort. Yeah, yes. like, right there. It's, good yeah, boy! The per- that's perfect timing, and that's, um, for you, Sonia, like, an exact example of, like, what we were talking about, of, like, use that verbal marker to, like, get the moment that you want and then go ahead and pay at that moment. Um, Got it. Yeah, especially in a situation with, like this, where it's like, he was fully ready to like try to climb through this fence and it's like, yeah, we don't necessarily need to teach him that lesson. This is straight wire, but if it were barbed or something, like we don't need to get him in the habit of pushing through stuff that is not push throughable. Because <laughs> again, as a lab, like that's not a, it's not a hard skill for a lot of labs to learn. Um, really well yay oh my god little puppy play time then we fall over so yeah really really nice work and again um i think the biggest feedback i've got for her is on that marker um and there was actually we're gonna share again there was one moment where i was like "Eh." um not sure if we're Hover, hovering or over queuing a little bit here. So we get him to search. It might be because she's trying to talk to us, but I would be cautious of hesitating this much here and kind of using your body as a cue for where to search. Um, if you're not doing that really consciously. So like really nice job here where she does rotate away, um, but being really careful not to like um, accidentally lure him in somewhere. Can you elaborate on that? I mean, I totally understand Mm -hmm. about like the putting on pressure in terms of like, you know, physically crowding the dog or or Mm -hmm. facing the dog straight on, but how do you use your body to lure the dog? Yeah, here, let's, um, we, it wouldn't be a real uh, Patreon call if we don't have a point where I try to draw something on a whiteboard. Uh, (laughs) So if we've got the hide here and the dog is trying to go search over here and you stand here, you are basically using your body to pull the dog back into you and okay. hopefully back into that odor cone, which can be a strategy to use intentionally. But also if it's really easy to overdo and really easy to kind of teach your dog to just search right near you. And if you're not walking forward, they need to come back and they need to alert and they can start kind of guessing and reading too much off of you. So in a lot of situations, what you would want to do is even though your target is here, I would follow the dog. I would go with the dog out here and then maybe arc back through somehow with them as part of like a full search strategy, teaching them that they they can take the lead, they can take the initiative, they can show you where they wanna go 
and then you're kind of casually taking them back through somewhere um so as an example a lot of times of what this may look like so if we've got a target here and the wind is going this way so we've probably got an odor cone here and you start here so we'll start here and the dog takes off and for whatever reason just misses it here it could be a lot of times with our odor cones it's not quite this this clean um it could have like lofted up or it could be going through in puffs um like all of these different things can happen with our odor cones where like if you imagine um watching smoke from a wildfire or a campfire you can see like it'll rise and come back down or it might kind of go again in these like bursts so for whatever reason your dog misses it here you are better off in the long term following the dog going with the dog and letting them go versus stopping and hanging out here in the hopes of kind of getting them to come back in and search here and find it because again in the long term that is teaching your dog to pay attention to where you are and guess based on where you are instead of following their noses so what i would do in this situation so we've now gone out this way now let's okay great now we're doing a transect so now we're going to go down this way and we're going to come back through here and see if the dog catches it now and can take us up and if they don't still at this point then a lot of times what I will do is I will call it um, and restart the search or, you know, something because kind of constantly circling back or hovering near the hide, again, it, it's just a bad lesson for them to learn. Does that make sense? Does that clear it up a little bit? Yeah. yeah. The other, like, there's a bunch of different ways that this can go, but one of the others is a lot of times the dog goes here. So they've passed right by it, but there was no odor there. So again, like you hanging out here. God, I'm terrible at drawing on these things. Again, it doesn't help them in the long run as far as learning how to be like an independent searcher. And when you don't know where it is, then if you like pause to check your GPS or you pause to take a drink of water or something, your dog might kind of suck back into you and start throwing alerts because he's like normally when mom stops walking it's because she knows something's there and I just have to check around her and I just have to like kind of pretend to search until she stops moving because she'll stop moving and tell me where it is even if you're not actually telling them is that yeah mm -hmm. yeah and this is a really common problem for those of us that train alone um because we always know where it is and we are always even kind of subtly doing this um and i know actually and i've been thinking about this so the opposite problem can also happen not the opposite but i was so worried about that problem that with niffler i think i created this problem where i was so determined to pretend i didn't know where the hides were that i was i would move too quickly and i would actually pull him off of odor because he wasn't as obvious in his body language as barley so now I have a little bit of a problem where Niffler will hit odor here and alert because when he was younger, I was so determined to not accidentally create this problem that I would just keep walking and move past him as he had caught odor. So he is now kind of learned, unfortunately, to alert as soon as he encounters odor and then I'll double back to him and he'll move upwind and alert again. And then I move up to him and then he alerts again. And usually this final alert is a much clearer change of behavior. Um, but I've just realized in like the last week that I think I created this problem because I went too far in the opposite direction of what we're talking about. So right now, I think everyone in this, uh, everyone in this call could move more towards the idea of pretending you don't know where the hide is, make sure you're not hovering, make sure you're not circling, make sure you're not cueing them in any way with even, and like you can even be as subtle as like, you're following the dog, but your shoulders are still oriented towards the hide. Dogs will pick up on that, especially our herding dogs. Um, or if your toes are always pointed towards the hide or whatever, like you really have to like stay square towards the dog. Um, but 
you can also go too far. So just be aware of the fact that you can go too far um, because I'm pretty sure that's how I caused this little problem with Nibbler that I'm dealing with now. And it's it's fine, we're working through it, but <laughs> can happen. Um, I do have one quick question. Yes. You mentioned the smoke bombs, mm -hmm. um, which I think would be, that that's something I feel like I would like to know a lot more is how mm -hmm. like scent, scent and with the airflow, how scent moves. What are the smoke bombs and where would I get them? Um, I picked up some from a discount fireworks store because 4th of July was recent. Um, I have not liked some of them from the fireworks store, but some of the others have been pretty good. Um, you can also get them, they're more expensive, but from HVAC supply places. From, oh, HVAC? supply um, okay yeah um okay. they're a little bit more expensive but they're quite good and then do be aware especially because we are in southern colorado they are still a fire risk so be careful with where you're setting them off they're colored smoke do not set them off indoors um <laughs> they will stain everything um but yeah they're really really helpful they're also um so the book club that we just had for patreon was detector dogs and scent movement by tom osterkamp I cannot recommend that book highly enough as a place to kind of start. It's got some lovely, lovely illustrations. We do have recordings of that book club. If you kind of scroll back through Patreon, you'll be able to find those and kind of talk through some of them. Um, if you want to just catch up once you get the book and start reading it. Yeah. Awesome. Um, Thank you. Yeah. I really liked that book as a way to really, really think through like how inversions can change things and like what happens when odor hits a tree and especially if it's like sunny out then the odor is going to rise and get sucked up the tree and you get these chimney effects and it's like it's crazy how much this book has and it's Fantastic. really dense but um really really helpful um you know and then watch your dog like watching videos back can tell you a lot about what the odor is doing and how your dog is reading it as you get better and better at reading the dog and watching these videos but yeah, and then we're also going to talk about it in our upcoming class, which I don't think you're in, but we. Uh, what is the class? Is it too late to join? Uh, we could let you in. <laughs> it is. Um, so we're teaching like a full on like start to finish handler course that starts August 7th. Okay. Um, I can, I'll shoot you an email with the link to sign up. It's 750 bucks, um, but we've had a couple people drop out recently, so we do have some space. Okay. Um, and Great. we're going to go through a lot of it um, and really like all it's it's kind of taking like all of these disparate parts that we talk about in the podcast and in Patreon and everything. So a lot of it is going to be familiar concepts, but it's really putting it together in like a sequential uh, cumulative way. Sounds perfect. Yeah, I'm really excited for it and also nervous. Um, we've got like we had like 70 people interested in the course. I think we're down to like 30 who are actually going to be in it, which is much closer to the number that we wanted. Um, but it's going to be really cool. <laughs> so yeah, those are those are the resources I would suggest for starting out. Love it. Thank you. Yeah. Michelle, do you have any questions or anything you wanted to circle back to? Um, yeah, maybe I'll just ask about something that's come up. I mean, Ms. Bala, there's so many things, but uh, something recent that came up with Laika. So Laika's had a whole season under her belt. She found 63 black footed cat scats, all confirmed. Um, so I thought the environment here would actually be less distracting. Um, mm -hmm. The only thing she really seems distracted by normally is uh, jackal. She just uh, uh -huh. has to overmark. <laughs> jackal um but there's pretty much no jackal here it's um i mean they're all killed off because it's sheep farms um mm -hmm. oh, yeah, but there i mean there's still other small canids ard wolves and cape fox and um battered foxes um so that might be what's distracting her but um anyhow just recently she hasn't been holding her her alert okay She'll, she'll go off of it, um, sometimes go back to, you know, go back to it, but she's, yeah, she hasn't been holding on it, onto it as much. And I don't know if that's just because she's, you know, more distracted more interested in other smells um, or what. So I have just been 
tossing in some, uh, you know, if she does give a good indication, I'll just say good, 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 and sort of have her have her hold it and then go up. Um, mm -hmm. Or we've done a few, you know, planting scats and then having yeah. her hold, hold those. So I think we're working through it, but um, yeah, it was something that was a little, a little worrying yeah. and wasn't expecting after. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess dogs always need, um, there's yeah. new things that come up even if they have done the same job in a slightly different environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what I would, I would definitely be trying to work on it in separate training scenarios with a known scat, where you can try um, some of these different, uh, there are some like exercises. One of my favorites for this sort of thing um, is called Handler's a Dummy, where you're basically setting her up so that she has a relatively easy search, makes an alert, and then you do something kind of unexpected or ridiculous um before rewarding and then kind of building up the level of what you do in between sh her starting the alert and then her getting the reward so she's really learning that like holding the alert is the right thing to do even if you like spin in a circle before you come back to her, her oh, or or do okay. or do three jumping jacks or you know like starting with kind of small stuff where you're just like oh you alerted i'm gonna spin in a circle and then come to you um or and then you can build up to this idea of like she alerts and then you drop and do 10 push-ups <laughs> and then go go to yeah. her um but starting with these known hides really easy searches so that you can like build up the alert from there okay um, yeah and just yeah, kind just, of go ahead oh i was just gonna say that you know and and benfontaine we didn't have so many african wildcats mm -hmm. so i mean i'd worked with captive population scats and stuff for for discrimination training um but there's a lot at this field site and i'm just so worried that i'm i'm messing my dog because you know she's had these less strong indications and i'm not 100 percent sure if that's because there's a similar species and she's yeah. thinking about indicating and so then if i go and you know try and bring her back in and get a stronger indication am i actually training her on a new scent i'm so worried about that <laughs> yeah yeah i would be really curious to know if you've got confirmed stuff and ideally confirmed but not something she's encountered before so not one of your like training scouts you've used a dozen times. If you see that same behavior in that situation. And then I would also be curious to know when she leaves the alert, what is she going to do? Um, like, is she just kind of continuing searching? Is she going directly to something else? Kind of, are we seeing it with every single one? There's a whole bunch of different questions we can kind of dig into as far as like, and then kind of figuring out what may be the cause or the issue um, from there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying yeah, to... it could be it could be that she these cruddy alerts are because it's, you know, say it's serval or whatever it is. And she's kind of like, ooh, maybe, but like maybe not. So it could be the sort of thing where you want to be like, okay, yeah, you like thought it was interesting and now you're leaving it. Okay. Um, it could be that she's going on to something that is more interesting and she's just kind of doing this drive-by situation, which we see, I've seen a lot of labs do that. Um, and I haven't worked with as many pointers, but it's not uncommon in some of our birdie hunty dogs that they're, the game of searching becomes more fun than the game of finding. Yeah. And they kind of start doing this like, oh, I got it, but like, I'd rather go. So, um, yeah. So if you don't know off the top of your head the answer to some of those questions, then think about it and come back. Um, I probably have to go pretty soon, but if, do you have it based on those questions I threw at you? Did anything spring to, yeah. to mind? Uh, what comes to mind to me is she's more, in, she's really enjoying the search and more interested in searching. So I okay. think she's, she's coming off of it because of that would be my yeah. guess. Is there any way we can up her reward? Is there anything that we can do as far as how we play with her or what we're offering as a toy that would make it a little bit more salient? 
Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Cause I was like, maybe I've been too, too soft on the reward cause it's a ball reward and I don't mm -hmm. want, you know, I want to reward her, but I also don't want her to waste all her energy mm -hmm. like that. Um, so I have been giving her like softer ball rewards and then a, mixing in a food reward. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm also wondering if the rewards aren't frequent enough too. like the ball mm -hmm. sort of getting more in the back of her head because it's so I've been doing, you know, splitting up the transects a bit and having her come in, get some water, maybe yeah. do like, oh nudge and like just a ball in the mouth toss mm -hmm. sort of a thing release and then you know get her more excited about the ball and do another search mm -hmm. um that seems to be helping yeah um, just breaking the other thing that does come to mind is sometimes maintaining closer proximity to her if that's possible which may be through a leash or maybe through you kind of hustling to keep up then that way she just doesn't have to hold that alert as long like is she holding it for like yeah a, a second and a half or is she kind of holding it and then by the time you're halfway to catching up with her then she goes yeah yeah it'll be like a second and a half and then i'm not you know she'll sniff tail wag and then sort of half alert and then keep going okay yeah yeah i would definitely i think that's probably a problem that needs to be solved in training more mm -hmm. than during the searches and how much longer are you in namibia only here a uh, little over a month more from now yeah okay but the problem is i just the study area is huge i did not because there's a student that came in from the u.s and she has to fly out of south africa so i can't extend my stay um okay well, so, but I was actually thinking that's a good thing because this might be the sort of thing that we have to try and triage. We'll do what we can in evening training sessions or whatever to remedy it, but it might be the sort of thing that we won't be able to fully repair while you're operational for the next month. And if we can kind of like hang on and survive this deployment um, and get as much work done as we can, it might be the sort of thing that it's just so hard to fix these things in the field with real searches because you don't know where they are going to be and you can't be prepared um mm -hmm. and we don't really want to get in this habit of like calling her back in and demanding she show us and then like kind of yeah. that can actually be like an aversive frustrating experience for her mm -hmm. so it, again it may be the sort of thing that like if we can survive the rest of the deployment you might want to like again do what you can to prevent it from getting worse but just plan on coming back to it in a month um and hitting it hard once you're done yeah yeah i i think which i know this, isn't ideal yeah well because the the training samples that i did bring like it's it's to the point like they're they came from captive cats um there's a bit more moisture in them they're just not quite you know there's yeah. definitely going to be some different scent profile from the natural ones. So the ones where I have gotten like really strong indication and really strong hold. And I, you know, cause we know the home ranges of these females. So the ones that I'm like, okay, this should definitely be black footed cat. Um, you know, it, the, the bolus is quite extensive so we don't need all of it for genetics. So I have been saving some of those for, for training. Um, so yeah, I think I'll just try and throw in Mm -hmm. both short sessions in the evening and then even during longer searches yeah um, during, I mean it's it's hard with the searches because you don't want the dog to you know constantly come into you and then think that's when they're going to get their you know cause those yeah. sort of search patterns um, yeah you know. yeah it's a good it's a good it's a common issue um and I will also be curious to know if you make note of okay, sample 43 had a really solid alert, 44 had this kind of weird drive-by alert. I would be really curious to know if that ends up correlating with anything in the genetics later on. Yeah. Um, the, so at Benfontaine, they don't breed in the winter time. It's too cold in South Africa. Uh, but here they breed in the winter. So we've been getting these tiny little kitten scats. And the first couple of times she was kind of like, 
uh, probably done the same pheromones, that sort of thing. But yeah. we have picked up some other um, juveniles that uh, are near collared yeah. females. She is right on those. I don't no yeah. smaller than a black footed cat so <laughs> right yeah so you're like teeny tiny cats cat probably ours um, <laughs> yeah okay yeah yeah well um give it a try whatever you can over the next couple weeks and do just kind of know that it might be the sort of thing that is going to be yeah you know like this like nifflers fringe alerts that i was dealing with last winter or last summer it was kind of like all right, we're going to do what we can to remedy this over the next couple months, but um, we're not likely to be able to fix this well until we're able, we're just training in a controlled setting. Yeah. So I think in the, before the field, because we were doing the certification, I spent so much time on the discrimination training, mm -hmm. more so with Sabala, because I'm like, come on, Sabala, like at least get certified so I'm not wasting all this money driving there and everything and doing the process she didn't pass like it did um so I wasted a lot of time on Sabala um oh, when I probably should have been doing more natural longer searches um with like a yeah and yeah. now I'll let you go um, yeah it's yeah sorry I don't have anything more like I'll, I'll keep thinking on it and kind of circle back um yeah we'll, we'll come up with some more stuff but keep us in the loop yeah so sabala has gotten on the back burner because you know the operational dog is yeah. having some, yeah, some now we're faulty so um okay all right well so you're doing uh you're back to the bat carcass are you working mm -hmm. both dogs i am yeah yeah it's really nice okay. um, yeah nice. it's been good to be able to work it's been so hot here that it's been nice to be able to trade them back and forth and like handling barley is is such a dream uh yeah so but I thought, I'll, he's he's perfect i i don't know why i keep throwing him under the bus he's doing really <laughs> really well uh i've been keeping a tally of who's finding more bats and they're i think barley's got one on niffler right now but like they're tied like I don't yeah. know why I keep throwing Niffler under the bus as like the lesser dog, <laughs> so which is nice to like kind of have myself like be forced to like prove that over and over to myself and being like, no, he's finding just as many as Barley. He looks like a ding, he looks like a dingleberry half the time he's searching. I think that's really what it is. Barley is just such a clear like nose down, tail up, working, working, working. Like he's a very serious performative searcher and Niffler is just yeah. like, whoa, whoa, whoa. like he's got his head up, his tail up. He's like running these huge loops. It doesn't look like he's working <laughs> and then he alerts. And I'm always kind of like, how many did you miss when you were running around like a maniac? And now I kind of, I've, the reason I started keeping a tally was because I like, I was like, all right. Cause then we can kind of see in theory, they should be tied if Niffler is actually working all of the time and when he's running, it's because there's nothing for him to find. Right. A weekend, it seems like he's just as effective as Barley. I mean, obviously there is a chance that he's missing stuff because there's a chance his wind turbines had bats that he missed. And, you know, like statistically speaking, until we get a lot more in, it's gonna be hard to say for right. sure, but it seems like <laughs> he's actually yeah. just as good as Barley is. Yeah. Oh, he just good. doesn't look it he doesn't he doesn't have that same really traditional like work ethic look to him yeah well if so. they could figure out how to balance work and play like okay there's there's nothing here uh, mm -hmm. well and that's you know I, yeah i feel like it's helpful for me to kind of be like okay so if he looks like that it's probably because there's nothing for him to find and i just need to trust that uh, I'm so jealous. I wish I could get Sabala, like, uh, she could help out a little bit, because, like, uh, yeah. like, is doing all the work, and she's pretty tired, and it's like, oh, it'd be nice if your sister could, could do. actually help yeah. out. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm <laughs> so right. bummed it didn't work like, out for me to, like, come down and meet up while I was in Kenya. No, I know. I nice while been. I was on the continent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the other thing, well, I don't know how you can help, but We've been finding quite a few um, like leg hold traps with the animals in it. And so now I'm really 
worried about like poison and stuff too because i tend to feed the dogs after work um, yeah and yeah i don't i haven't put a lot of training into you know never eat anything during especially sabala since food has been her her reward it just makes me really nervous a- yeah that would make me really nervous we can let's table that as well as like because that's something we actually can really work on in training like intentionally putting stuff out in a yeah. way that we can we can teach them that lesson um, yeah so now I'm just gonna you know I just try and keep rain and moon a little closer mm-hmm. and at least the visibility is quite far so. yeah well and especially with leg hold traps too like poison is terrifying but and then we've also got the leg hold traps so yeah I mean it's yeah. mostly just the the flat ones but then i've seen okay. like so but it still could crush like toes practically like, scra- you know a whole body trap uh basically yeah, yeah really that's really scary yeah 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 it's a bit of a we're yeah. seeing out there's like a wall of death of just everything nasty <sighs> yeah okay i do really have to go um but yeah, me too yeah okay yeah, go to bed thank you so much. Right. yeah thank okay. you um yeah we'll we'll keep working through it all right cool okay. bye, bye.